Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna look how to find the finite sum of an arithmetic series. So series is just a sequence where you're adding up all the terms. So if I say, what's the first uh, 30 terms in the sequence, how do you add that up? Um, how do you add it up efficiently, I should say. And to start, let's look at this problem, the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. Because this problem is gonna lend us some insight is how do I add the first 70 terms of this particular sequence? So the first 100 natural numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, all the way up to 100. And there's kind of an urban legend that goes with this. We don't know if it's true or not, but evidently uh, a famous mathematician, before he was a famous mathematician, Carl Friedrich Gauss, let's say he was in like the third grade. I don't know what actual age he was in. And he was kind of smarting off to his teachers. His teacher said, hey, I want you to go add up the first 100 numbers. And uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, oops, this is a, a picture of him right here. This is not third grade version of him. This is old version of him. So picture third grade version of this guy. He, he walks over to the side. The teacher assumes that this problem uh, that he or she gave Gauss was going to keep him busy for a while. And it took him about a minute. He said, oh, the answer is 5,050. And she was like, whoa, how did you do that? And so little third grade Gauss said, he said, oh, well, you know, if I write out my first hundred numbers like this, kind of in this pattern, leaving out all these in the middle, we kind of know how the pattern goes. That's equal to the sum we want, right? But if I write the same sum right below it in reverse order and add straight down, look what happens. 1 plus 100 would give us 101, right? 2 plus 98 would also give us 101. 3 plus 97 would give us 101. And we end up adding up 101 over and over a whole bunch of times, right? Now, keep in mind, this is going to be twice the sum we want because we took the sum and we um, added it to itself. But you gotta ask yourself, okay, well, how many times are we adding 101 in this particular situation? And you might be saying, well, 100 times, right? Because there were 100 numbers we were adding. So if I take 101 and I add it 100 times, you could just do 101 times 100, and that would give you twice the sum you wanted. So then you just divide by two on each side. And evidently, this is how he did it. You know, he got that 50 50 for a sum. Once again, uh, some of the details are lost in history. Who knows exactly how it went? But that same reasoning we can apply and we can generalize it to the first n natural numbers. So what if we didn't do the first 100 natural numbers? What if I wanted to find the sum of the first, say, 75 natural numbers? How would we do that? But let's generalize, okay? So our sum would look like this. I'd start with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da 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 da. And we're adding the first n numbers, right? We're trying to be general here. So the number before that could be represented with n minus 1, and the number before that could be represented with n minus 2, so on and so forth. Well, if we take that same sum and write it below it in reverse order, we can add straight down, and let's see what happens. We have n plus 1 would give us n plus 1, but then if I take n minus 1 and add 2 to it, that would also give us n plus 1. And if I take n minus 2 and add 3 to it, that would also give us n plus 1. So we find that we would just have n plus 1 a whole bunch of times. Now granted, if I added up all of these n plus ones, that would give us twice the sum we wanted. Keep in mind, this is twice as big as the number we're looking for. But you ask yourself, how many times am I adding n plus one? And you're doing it n times. That's how many times we're adding straight down. So we could condense this repeated addition as multiplication. n times n plus one equals twice our sum, or if you divide by two on each side of the equation, you get this formula. So this would be a formula to write down. That's how you can find the sum of the first n natural numbers. If I wanted to add the first 70 numbers, I just put a 70 in for n and do 70 times 71 divided by 2. And now let's take this in, and I want to generalize this even further. Let's see if we can use the same relationship and find the first, you know, so many numbers of a sequence that's not just the first natural numbers, but an actual arithmetic sequence. See, here we have an arithmetic sequence that's going up by 3 every time. Could we use the same reasoning to derive a rule for adding up the first 84 terms of that? So if we look right here, we've got you know 37 plus 40 plus 43. The thing is, the 84th number in the sequence, I don't really know. So it'd be hard to put a number here and know what this was. But since this is an arithmetic sequence, we can use our knowledge of writing rules for arithmetic sequences. And so I'm gonna bounce over here to the right and do that real quick. Our explicit rule for an arithmetic sequence takes the form of the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. I've got that in my previous video where that comes from if you need that information. And so we know our first term is 37 and our common difference is 3. So this would be our explicit rule. And we're trying to find the 84th term in the sequence. So I just substitute an 84 in for n. And we do our math. So I do 
37 plus 3 times 83, and that would find that the 84th term is 286. Now, that would mean I've got a 286. The term before that would be 3 less than that. The term before that would be 3 less than that. So this is what our sum looks like that we're trying to find. And without you know, manually brute forcing this and trying to add all those up, we can use the same reasoning Gauss used a couple of slides ago. Let's write the same series in reverse order below it. And I see that I have 37 plus 286, which is 323, and then 40 plus 283 will be 323, and all of these sums will be 283, or excuse me, will be 323. So if I can figure out how many times I'm adding 323 together, that's going to give me twice the sum we want. Well, how many times are we adding it together? We were doing 84 terms, right? We did it 84 times because this was the 84th number in this sequence. So this um, 323, we added it to itself 84 times. That gave us twice the sum we wanted, so we just divide by 2 on each side. Now, this is all well and good. This is how we get 13,566 is the answer to this question, but let's generalize that pattern. Look what we did here. The 84 is just how many terms we were adding, and then the 323 is simply the sum of the first term and the last term. So if you know the first term, and you know the last term, and you know how many terms you're adding, you can evaluate that series. You can find out how um, uh, what the sum is if you were to add all those up and save yourself a ton of time. So this is the other formula I would write down. This is a good, important pattern for us. And let's just try to apply what we've learned. I've got our two relationships copied up here. This is the sum of the first n natural numbers. This is the sum of the terms of an arithmetic series. And so let's just try to apply these. So on this first problem, it says find the sum of the first 342 natural numbers. Well, we know our formula is n times n plus 1 over 2, and that's going to give us our sum. Well, uh, the number of terms we're doing is we're doing 342 terms times 343, which is n plus 1, and then we divide by 2. And if I just punch that into my calculator, that's going to give me, according to what the calculations I did earlier, 58,653. Next, let's find the sum of the first 25 numbers of the sequence given by blah. Okay, now what we know is our relationship to find the sum of those first um, 25 terms, or I guess I can give the general form of it, would be n, the number of terms, times my first term plus my last term divided by 2. Well, to find some of the first 25 terms, that means we're going to have 25. My first term is 30. We don't know the last term yet, so we might have to do a little aside work to figure out the last term. What is the 25th number in this sequence? So let's bounce over here to the right, and what we know is that to find the nth term in an arithmetic sequence, we do our first term plus my common difference times n minus 1. So to find the 25th term in this sequence, we're going to take my first term of 30, my common difference is minus 7 because we're going down by 7 each time, and then we are going to do 25 minus 1, because we put 25 in for n, which is really just a 24. And I did this math already. That's going to become 30 minus 168 or negative 138. So the 25th term in the sequence is negative 138. That goes right here. And once we know what this is, this is just a calculator button push. And so to find the, the sum of the first 25 terms of the sequence, we use this relationship that we derived, and once you evaluate that, that's going to be negative 1,350.